Hi everyone, welcome to the 14th episode of Peculiar with me, Akin. This episode is a collaboration which I host. This is my first time, so bear with me. The theme of this collaboration is video game characters, but make them sexy. The rule is pretty simple, pick any video game character and sexualize them, but of course, this should go without saying, the collaborators are not allowed to choose characters that are children, including those, I might look 12 but I'm actually a thousand years old ancient deity. Just no, worst character trope ever. That being the rule, the best bet is to pick a non-human character and personify them, so I picked Bowser from Super Mario. I've seen Bara artists do that before and with my style and aesthetic, me picking Bowser shouldn't be a big surprise. Also, a couple years ago, I made this video about making doll joints. Looking back at it, I have no idea why I would put myself through that, but in this video, we're actually going to revise that idea. I'm going to reveal the collaborators at the end of this video, so stick around. Without further ado, let's begin my process. For the head, I'm using this Daring Charming. In fact, I based this entire project off this face sculpt. I really like the smirk and I was like, this is going to be Bowser. Let's remove the head and pry off the plastic hair. This doll has that stiff neck peg instead of an anchor one, so the head can only swivel and not pivot. That's rather disappointing. This is not that bad, we still got most of the forehead. Anyway, let's wipe off the factory paint with pure acetone. Clean the excess acetone with some wet wipes and put the head aside for now. For the body, I found this Hulk figure. I'm pretty sure this is a knockoff because the quality is, oh my god, it's horrible. One of the legs is detached and can't be reattached, it's entirely made out of vinyl and it's very, very thin. So I start prepping the body by disassembling all the limbs, wiping off the paint and tear it apart into segments so I can add joints later. I also cut the neck part from the Daring's body so we can transplant it to the Hulk's body. When I said the construction of this body is thin, I mean it. I had to build walls of epoxy on the inside of every piece just to reinforce them and that cost me entire tubs of epoxy. That's not funny. Time for the exciting part. Here I'm gonna demonstrate how to make double joint out of popsicle sticks. First I'm gonna stack and glue 4 popsicle sticks together to make the joint plate. I clamp them together while the glue is drying to make sure it'll be flat and even, that's kind of important. Then I make two stack ones which will be the joint pieces. This will be what you need to make one joint. The thickness is actually up to you, you can stack more or less popsicle sticks. Let's take a closer look at the four stack, the one that's gonna be the joint plate. Popsicle stick is ideal for making joints because it has perfectly rounded ends which are essentially circles, so let's mark one of them like this. And then you add a half a centimeter gap from that circle. And then you add another circle from that gap. Now you got two sides, you can leave them both straight or make one of them curve like this. The curve here is optional, it doesn't really improve the possibility or anything, it just makes the overall look better. Then you're gonna want to drill holes in the center of both circles. And that's it, that's what you wanna do to make the joint plate, that's the pattern. Then we can make the real thing according to the pattern I just explained. These are the parts you need to make a joint, 4 joint pieces, 1 joint plate, and 2 spacers. The spacers are optional but they'll make things easier. They're made out of the 4 stack popsicle stick. Here's the joint piece. The length of this part doesn't really matter as long as it's enough to accommodate one circle of the joint plate. Here I'm marking where that would be. Let's glue the spacer in between the joint pieces. This is pretty crucial, you're gonna want to apply thin layer of epoxy all over the surface. This will make the overall construction stronger, kinda like a bonding agent. Do the same to the joint plate. 
Once the epoxy is cured, the joint plate can be inserted in between the joint pieces like so. It should be pretty snug, if not, you can make adjustment by adding or sanding the epoxy. Now we can start drilling the holes using the pattern we made earlier as a guide. Let's test it out by attaching the bolt. The holes are actually need to be a bit larger than the bolt size. For example, your bolt size is 3mm, so you're going to drill holes that are 3.5mm. This will make sure the bolt will be able to roll around easily. All the movements will eventually loosen up the nut. That's what she said. Shut up! So to fix that, we're going to dribble some thread locker to lock the nut in place. This is where you really have to feel things around because you need it to be tight enough to hold the pose but at the same time loose enough to bend. You might think what makes a dull joint able to hold the pose is the tightness of the bar that goes across all the joint parts. That helps but not exactly the main factor. What makes a dull joint able to hold the pose is actually how well the joint pieces squeeze the joint plate which is made possible by the nuts. Anyway, after the thread locker dried, mark lines that are parallel with the bolts, like this. With fresh blobs of epoxy, conceal all the bolt parts. After letting the epoxy cure, cut rectangles out of craft foam and glue them to the straight sides of the joint pieces. Align them with the mark we made. It should look like this. Keep in mind to glue the craft foam only to the joint pieces and not the joint plate, otherwise the joint won't be able to bend. On the curved sides, we're gonna cut rounded notches that match up with the joint plate before gluing the craft foam like so. The rounded notches improve the possibility and the craft foam shield the future epoxy from getting in the way, keeping the path of the joint plate to stay clear for it to bend. Now we can build epoxy all around the joint pieces. Let the epoxy cure and protect the joint pieces with masking tape. Now we can sculpt the kneecap or the elbow, depending on what you're making, on the straight side of the joint. The mark on the joint plate is where you should stop sculpting. After the epoxy has cured, remove the masking tape and that's it. That's the fundamental of my joint making method. I hope you find this helpful and I hope my explanation is understandable. Now that I taught you something pretty cool, the building I run is a family business and with the mortgage and everything else, I barely get anything lately, so if you can, if you don't mind, and if you're willing to, please consider donating to my coffee page. Thank you. Sorry for the continuity error here, but the popsicle stick isn't wide enough for the Hulk's legs or even the arms, so I tried to be more resourceful and found a custom acrylic surface to make the joint parts. These are the schematics I send them, yet I still ask questions about the thickness of the acrylic and stuff, like I didn't put that information in the schematics. What is it with Indonesians and not wanting to read? Here's what all the parts look like. We're going to assemble them the way we did the popsicle sticks. The differences are, all the parts have to be sanded first and the spacers are screwed on instead of glued. The assembled joints look like this. They look pretty slick if I say so myself. So I start attaching the joints to the limbs. I continue the body reconstruction by adding rotating joints to the upper arms, thighs, and ankles. Using audio jacks for rotating joints has got to be one of the best things I discovered. I also attach the shoulders and the hips with elastics as well as lengthening the arms, legs, and torso. Now this is where I suspected I messed up. 
I measured the leg and it's already 8.5 inches, just the leg and I was like what the fuck did I get myself into? So I tried to assemble the doll and this is what I got. It turned out to be too fucking huge, I mismeasured so bad, god damn it. The joints work out pretty well though, that's why I included that in this video, but this is a deal breaker, it's just not working out. I spent 3 weeks to get to this point only for all that time and energy to go down the drain. That's why I skip over a bunch of stuff because none of it made a cut. I know I can go overboard but man, this one hurts. Let's just throw in the towel and start over with something more approachable this time. For the new body, I picked up this Superman action figure. It's from Spin Master and I got it for $10 so it's not that bad. First thing I'm gonna do is yank off the cape, with enough force it comes right off. With heat from a hair dryer, I remove the head. And guess what, the neck peg is compatible with the Daring's head. That saves me a trouble. Also, it's easy to detach and reattach so we can work on the head and body separately which can save time. Using a sanding bit, I take out parts of the cape on the shoulders and the belt. The reason why I chose Superman is because the figure doesn't have that much detail that has to be taken out. The lower legs have boots on and that's not what we want. We have to do a transplant, so let's cut them off. I can already tell the lower legs are made out of solid vinyl, and solid vinyl is a bitch to cut. I even have to use my hacksaw to finish the job. For the lower leg donor, I'm sacrificing this perfectly good condition Hunter Huntsman. I don't really have any other choice. Maybe I'm gonna turn him into a merman? Do not ask me when I'm gonna make that, it's just a thought. Let's fill the cavities in the lower legs with epoxy, we'll connect them to the body later. Here I'm sending the body to roughen up the surface so the future epoxy will stick better to it. I'm pretty happy with the width of the torso so I'm not gonna split and space it wider, but I want to make the arms bigger so with an exacto knife I'm gonna carve the gaps of the arm sockets bigger. Let's start sculpting the new shoulders. The deltoids. The gaps aren't big enough so I bust out the diamond bit to do that job. This looks wide enough, so let's make the deltoids even bigger. This method only works if you want the part to be just a bit bigger though, like maybe around half a centimeter or so. I feel like bigger than that it might cause problem to the joint so tread carefully. After the epoxy cure, check the joints to make sure that they still work. They do, so let's proceed. You know what, let's make the torso wider after all, but nothing drastic. Check the shoulder joints again, they might need some cleaning up to make sure they work properly. Now we can continue the sculpting stage like giving him new packs. New back muscles. His original abs make him look emaciated so of course we're gonna sculpt him new ones. New collarbones. Other torso muscles I don't know the names of.
the neck muscles. I think we can start connecting the lower legs now, let's drill the holes through the parts. For the new tibias, oh my god, medical term, I'm a doctor. I'm using these acrylic rods I already cut to size and I set them in place with epoxy glue. This epoxy glue is from another brand because they ran out of the brand I usually use. This one is a paste and not thick liquid and it sucks. After the glue dried, we can conceal the extensions with epoxy. Yes, I made him taller, reasonably, this time. He's getting that BBL treatment. Of course, we're gonna have to make the biceps and triceps bigger, he doesn't skip arm day. We're done with the body modification, but I'm gonna crumple some aluminum foil and temporarily stick it to the back with hot glue. Wrap it with cling wrap. And then apply epoxy on top of it to make the base for that turtle shell thingy. After the epoxy cured, we can pop it off and discard the aluminum foil. We're gonna come back to the turtle shell later. Here I'm intentionally thinning down the joint plates with a diamond bit in hope that paint will stand a chance sticking to it. Now we send the epoxy and rinse it afterwards. Let's start working on the head. The first thing we want to do is make the scalp complete again. When you smooth an epoxy with water, watch out for the excess drip, just clean it right away. That's what happened here, I let the excess drip dry and it left a lot of residue, so here I'm trying my best to clean it. Let's plant some wires in there to make the armatures for the horns and new ears. After the wires are set, we can start sculpting those features. Let the first face cure before adding details. I kinda noticed that if you put the horns more to the sides, they look animalistic, but if you put them more front facing, they look demonic. I made them a little too front facing, but I think they still look pretty good, so let's just keep going. Because the base is blue, I'm gonna try this Mr. Primer Surfacer 1000 before applying the paint. I've never used primer before and I heard it helps the paint to adhere better, so we'll see. I give the body and the head two coats, they look pretty cool. And for the paint, I'm also gonna try something new. I bought this Vallejo Model Air in the color skin tone. Let's see if this paint is worth it. Honestly, it's underwhelming. Disappointing, even. The paint isn't as opaque as I thought it would be. I'd rather mix my own paint. Still took me 4 coats. Literally no difference in the paint I mix on my own, so no, not worth it. Also, the color doesn't look like the bottle. It turned out to be yellow, but it's fine because Bowser is kinda yellow. Anyway, I prepped the body with two layers of MSC so we can start blushing and drawing on the body hair.
We're done drawing on the body hair, now we can build up layers of acrylic paint to make the nipples. Face up time, you know how it goes, so I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. After sealing the finished face with the final layer of MSC, we can paint the horns. I tried giving him fangs by building up white acrylic paint but that doesn't work out so I wipe it off while the paint is still wet. We'll think of something else. For finishing, I gave the body four coats of watered down matte varnish and guess what? The paint seems to be sticking well to the joints, yay! Not the neat joints though, but who cares about them? I don't and you shouldn't. I also brush on the horns with 3 layers of gloss varnish for texture variety. Moving on to the hair, I'm gonna fluff the sides of his head. There were still some bald spots, so I'm gonna apply a second layer of flocking, but make sure the first layer has completely dried. After it dried and covered the areas nicely, I'm getting rid of the- God damn it, what the fuck? Now we can start gluing the hair wefts. Uh, I'm gonna start gluing the wefts around the outline in the opposite direction, so we can flip them up to make the mohawk later. To fill the mohawk, I'm coiling this long yarn weft like an accordion and glue it down the middle of the head. Using a wet toothbrush, I'm guiding the hair to stand up. You know what, let's glue loose weft on the eyebrows as well. And then trim them, I tried to do the split tips, but nah, didn't exactly work. But they still look a lot better than drawn on though, so it's a success. Anyway, I'm gonna glue on more loose weft to complete the beard now, starting from the bottom to the top, and eventually transition to the drawn on mustache. This is what we got so far, the hair is looking majestically insane so we gotta trim it, fine tune it, and tame it. I want the beard to curl upwards so I'm gonna style it with a heated metal chopstick and trim what's not needed. The beard has been styled and I'm coming back to the hair because I want to get that pointy mohawk so here I'm brushing on watered down glue to kinda sculpt the hair. Obviously the watered down glue made the hair crispy but I got the style I was going for so whatever. Addressing the fangs again, I decided to cut two tiny triangles out of white craft foam and glue them to the sides of his mouth. I also glue on loose weft to complete the chest hair from the outline going inwards and trim the weft as I go. 
It's an homage to Zangief from Street Fighter. The head and the body are finally done! What do you think of the fangs? They're not amazing, but they're fine. Let's take a look at the hair on the body. I already added the pubes. Anyway, let's put the head back on. Time for clothing. I got this wet look final fabric about a year ago when I thought about making KDA Evelyn skirt. That didn't happen, never will. Let's identify this material. It's 4-way stretch, the right side has this glossy smooth texture that's kinda sticky, and the wrong side is this lycra or spandex material. I ran into quite a few problems working with this fabric. My main problem was when I put the right side of the fabric facing the feed dogs of my sewing machine, the fabric kept getting stuck and wouldn't glide through. Most likely because of the glossy texture, so I couldn't hem or do anything that requires the right side of the fabric to face the feed dogs. I honestly was getting frustrated, but luckily I came across a video from Lomi's Playground working with what I think the same exact material, and that fixed my problem. So thank you very much Lomi's Playground. First I tried using a Teflon foot, but it didn't work out that well. What's better is putting a piece of matte tape on the bottom of a regular foot. I use magic tape, but I'm pretty sure any kind of matte tape would work. How can the budget version works better than the real deal? I don't know, but in this case it does. Also, I put tissue paper underneath the fabric as a stabilizer, and with that, I got the hang of sewing this goddamn material. I'm not gonna explain much about the sewing part for this doll, instead, I'm gonna talk about sewing itself, a ran to be exact. I have never felt the feeling I have about sewing about anything else. I have this love-hate relationship with sewing, just like I have with most things, honestly, but especially about sewing. I love it because it's a very handy skill, I gotta admit that. I hate it because I hate the entire process. Like, you gotta learn a new method every time you're sewing a new material, and I have never, I mean never, used a sewing machine that isn't temperamental. I mean, don't you think it's weird that sewing machines, as machines, act up for no reason at all from time to time? If you sew, I think you know what I'm talking about. To me, sewing is only worth it because of the result, and there is absolutely no more reason to it. Let me elaborate. Okay, let's talk about drawing for a second. When you draw, you will most likely start with a sketch, like a person for example. You get to see the vision right away that they're gonna be a person, but what kind of hairstyle will they have? What colors are their eyes gonna be? These thoughts keep you excited to keep going and finish your drawing. When it comes to drawing, you get to enjoy the process. But when it comes to sewing, what the fuck is this? I mean, come on, sewing patterns never look like anything. So if you genuinely enjoy sitting in front of a sewing machine and you know, so, instead of seeing it as a suffering you have to endure to get what you want, I don't trust you as a person. I think you're not right up there in the head. One advice I can give you if you're new to sewing or if you're considering to get into sewing, stick to cotton fabric for a while, get used to it and find your own pace and shit, you know? Because if you start with another material that requires special treatment right away, you're also gonna lose interest in sewing right away. So far, the results have always been worth it for me though, so I'm gonna keep sewing despite the complicated feeling I have towards it. For the first attempt, I made these leggings. They're alright, but boring. I gave it another shot and came up with this, skimpy briefs and chaps. They're so whorish, I love it. And yes, he is anatomically correct, I sculpted a dick during Ramadan, I'm going to hell and that's okay. Also I made the briefs a bit too small and that gives us a dick window, that worked in my favor. Finally coming back to the turtle shell, I'm gonna mark and build the rim first. Then the scales.
This is what the shell looks like with a scale, looks pretty cool. Now for the spikes, I got the spike beads that are just perfect in size, I'm gonna mark where I'm gonna put them. Then here I'm carving those marks so the spikes will sit nicely in their positions. Set the spikes in place with epoxy glue. Then I apply thin snakes around the base of the spikes to make the rims. After all the epoxy has fully cured, we get to sanding. Now we can paint it. I tried to prime it first but I ran out of it so let's just go straight to paint. Give it 3 layers of watered down matte varnish for protection. But I'm gonna make the spikes glossy to match the horns. I got this platter material, I cut it into strips and hem them lengthwise. This will be the straps for the shell as well as the base for the choker, armbands, wristbands, and belt. Here I'm installing buckles to two of the straps. Then I punch holes into the other two straps. Measure and mark where to glue the straps on the back of the shell. Now we can glue the straps to the shell. I'm using contact cement here because I couldn't think of anything else. Insert another strap into the belt loops, well, belt slots in this case, and measure the right length. Do the same for the choker, armbands, and wristbands. To make this removable, I'm gonna sew snaps to all of them. They're looking right. The belt really accentuates the dick window, I love that. I finally managed to find these nail art spikes which are perfect for this project. The problem was I didn't know what kind of glue to use. First I tried using this gem glue. Didn't work, the spikes came right off. Then I tried this Loctite vinyl fabric and plastic. Didn't work either. The spikes still came right off. I wasted $8 on that glue, goddammit. Vinyl fabric and plastic my ass. What finally worked was super glue. I was kinda hesitant to use super glue because the last time I used it, it was years ago. With zero result. But this time it worked, I'm just glad something did. For the shoes, I chose Nathan rods, I glue panels on them leaving only the toe box and soles exposed. I made other panels that look like this, I figured out how to sew this material properly and don't know how to act. I glue the bottom parts of these panels around the ankles to turn the shoes into boots. Sewed some hooks and eyes in the back for closure and these boots are looking pretty sleek. Plain, but sleek. I decided to paint the toe box and soles green. I think silver would've looked better but I need something green in the front.
Turned out green doesn't look so bad. Last accessory we're going to make is the belt buckle. I cut a small circle out of craft foam and painted cream as a base. And then I'm gonna paint the Bowser logo in green. Then I use gloss varnish for the top coat. What do you think? Does this look like the Bowser logo? If I glue it right in the middle, that will cover the dick window, so I'm gluing it more to the right. And with that, we can call it a doll. The participants in this collaboration are me, Falkitis World, Blurred Colors Art, Stitch Week Creations, Sky the Golden, OOAK Nara, Muñeki Taket, Kiat B Saguru. Harley's Dollhouse Edgelly Crafts Uni Dolls and Artisan Don't forget to watch all of our videos, everyone did such great jobs. So, I wanted to die working on this doll, so many things went wrong. I wasted time, energy, and especially money, so please donate. I mean, I wasted entire tubs of epoxy and that stupid useless $8 Loctite glue. And I had to get the new Superman action figure for the new base. But that's all fine I guess, he might not pan out exactly the way I wanted him to but I still like him. He's one of my favorites, not number one but he's up there. Also I don't think I'm gonna host another collaboration anytime soon, it was a lot of work and a lot of pressure. Anyway what do you think of him, let me know in the comments down below. This is the end of this video, hope you enjoyed it, like and subscribe if you want to, see you in the next one, bye!